Joining us now on the line, KT McFarland, National Security Analyst. Uh, you can follow her on Twitter, and I do, and it's worth your time, at, at KT McFarland. Hello, KT. Good morning. How are you? I'm just great. I'm out here at the College of the Ozarks in Branson, Missouri, and yeah. it's a terrific place. Yeah, you got to go down and listen to a little country music there. <laughs> no. I'm going to give a speech. You, you, <laughs> Kate, Kate, Kate seems music. more like That's the, their idea of country music. You seem Sorry. more like the Yakov Smirnoff type. That's you right. know, get some of that good Cold War humor going. This a good country or what? Okay, <laughs> it listen. It's actually a really great country. Not a country. Yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, moving on. I want to talk about Cuba because the president is about to drop Cuba from the yeah. state terrorism list. He sent the prerequisite note to Congress uh, yesterday indicating his plan to do so. What did we get in our negotiations with Cuba in exchange for what we're going to give them? Well, the only thing the president really cares about, which is another opportunity to cement his foreign policy legacy. Yeah. Like, his foreign policy has been just an absolute unmitigated disaster. Even, uh, even Democrats are worried now. But so he's got to pull something out because, of course, he's a consequential president. So he's going to have two things. He wants to have a deal with Iran, any kind of a deal, no matter what happens afterwards, but so that he can end his presidency on a note of, I'm like Nixon. I changed the world. Nixon went to China. I'm going to Iran. And the world is going to be a safer place. Now, five minutes after he leaves office, they're going to, the nuclear weapons will be all over the Middle East. But anyway, Obama gets his moment. And the second moment that he wants is he wants his trip to Havana. He wants his great summit. He wants to change relations with Cuba. Now, the, the Iran thing I have a lot, a lot, a lot of problems with. The Cuba thing, though, I think is... is I take a slightly different take than most conservatives. I want to have close relations with Cuba. I don't want to have close relations with Castro. I don't think that's the way to do it. But Castro brothers, who have run that place for over half a century, are going to die soon. And when they die, no matter what succession plan they have, there will be political chaos in that country. It is essential that the United States is there to pick up the pieces. It is essential that we right now today have improved relations with Cuban reformers. I mean, Castro just threw 200 of them in jail. We should know those guys. We should have them on speed dial. We should have relations with Cuban educators, with Cuban medical people, with Cuban business people. We want to make sure that when that place goes into chaos, it's us that helps rebuild it. Because if it's not, it'll be the Chinese or it'll be the Russians. Mm. And the only time we have ever gone to an almost nuclear war in, in since the dawn of the atomic age was over Cuba and so and Russian and Soviet missiles, nuclear missiles in Cuba. If the Russians and the Cubans are there first and help rebuild Cuba, I promise you they will want a military base there. And yep. I promise you that in the nuclear age, those that mil- those military bases, those either naval bases or, or missile bases, will have nuclear weapons on them. K.T. McFarlane, on Monday, Senator Marco Rubio announced his plans to run for the White House. And, you know, I, I sympathize and I identify with Marco Rubio because, you know, everybody calls him so young and vibrant and handsome and fresh-faced and a breath of fresh air. This is what they say about me, K.T. Um, and, Look, I and, thought they were saying something different about you. <laughs> <laughs> but the sad thing I, I've is... I've been reading the press of what you've been doing uh, in the last 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, let's They're not... talking about a little different things. Mean, you, you're watching old n- n- Harry Potter. All right, enough of that. I don't want to get in trouble <laughs> any more than I already am. Uh, but, you know, the problem is they, 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 they look at me and Marco Rubio and they just see the surface. They don't dig deep into, you know, our very strong intellectual uh, foundations. Marco Rubio seems to be, if you actually look at what he said, he's a pretty strong defense hawk, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's really running a bit to the right of the other contenders right now for national security and of robust American influence around the world. Yeah, I mean, the, the question is... is um you know, when I look at who's running for president, and I think the more the merrier. I mean, it is so important for the nation to debate these issues because we are at an absolute turning point. The 2016 election is going to be like the, like the 1980 election. We're going to have a real choice. Are we going to go more in the direction of Obama? You know, is the country going to do what they did with Jimmy Carter, where we're going to go America in decline, American withdrawal from the world, a bigger, bigger, bigger social welfare state, less economic development, um, and America you know, really losing confidence in who we are and the world losing confidence in us? Or are we going to go in the other direction, like a Ronald Reagan direction, yeah. where we take away the shackles of government, let the, the unbelievable new inventions that have happened in the last two or three years, let them unleash them so that they can go on the world, rebuild American defenses, 
and, and reclaim our place in the world, not necessarily because we invade every place, not Bush style, but Reagan style, where we stand up, we pull together coalitions, and we have the meanest, toughest, strongest military in the world that nobody, bought, nobody even dares come after us. And if they do, I mean, we don't start wars, but if, if somebody comes after us, we crush them like a bug. You know this group. And that's the question. And so the, I'm looking for the. I'm looking for Reagan. You know this group, Judicial Watch, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, Judicial Watch has has a history of getting a lot of things right, and they're the right. ones who you know petition government for, for open records and are always you know asking for things like uh, what you know where are Hillary's emails and that kind of stuff. They, there's, they're there. There's a report this morning on a Judicial Watch, and it's not been reported anywhere else by any other mainstream news organization that I can find that says that they have confirmed the the presence of small ISIS camps just miles from El Paso, Texas. Yeah. Is this if this turns out to be it's, true it's is this surprising Watch, to you? No. I mean, first of all, Judicial Watch has a great reputation. They don't go off half cocked. So they do have they do they probably are talking they have had a pretty good relationship with a lot of the border guards on the Mexican border on the US side of the Mexican border. So I would believe what they say. Secondly, it doesn't surprise us at all. I mean, you know, ISIS and radical Islam has talked about coming into America through Mexico for a long time, through the southern border. So, no, I'm not in the least bit surprised. That's why it is absolutely essential for people to, in Washington to put aside the politics. You know, figure we need to figure out who's here in the United States. We, and, and however you do that, whether it's a border, whether it's maybe a border combined with some kind of allowing citizenship for people who qualify, whatever it is, we need to know who's in this country because it will become more and more apparent in the next two or three or four years and it, because of the ease with which con- terrorist activities can be conducted. You know, you don't need to have a big superstructure, infrastructure, and a big army, a big navy, a big Marine Corps to cause amazing harm to countries, as we saw on September 11th. So that's why it's essential to find out who's here. And I think that southern, that poor southern border is is a vulnerability and, an, and a terrible tragedy waiting to happen. Well, if that if that turns out to be a true story and, and there's other confirmation of it, that is big stuff. Yeah, KT, we only have 30 seconds, but what should the response be to Vladimir Putin selling this missile defense to Iran? Go to him and say, we are going to destroy your economy. <laughs> we are going to we are going to take all steps possible, just like Ronald Reagan took, and you are not going to finish out your term of office unless you help us fight radical Islam and stop supporting the countries which are promoting radical Islam. Any, any, any hope of Obama doing that? Not a chance. All right, KT, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you so much, KT. Always Thank a pleasure. You.